Hello everybody, this is Pano160 here, and welcome, welcome to World of Warships Open Beta. If you haven't joined it and you don't know about it, well, get on the server, mate. It's been out for almost a month, a month and a half, and it's as amazing game as it is. Unfortunately, it's not the game's fault. It's I'm from Southeast Asia, and from Southeast Asia, we have pretty bad players. I myself included but I try my best to be a good player so as you can see I finally within a month and a half have hit tier 5 and this is where the grind would genuinely begin this is the tier 5 Omaha which we are not covering today because I haven't had a good game in it yet but it's a fantastic ship and it comes with a little itty bitty plane which I find really really cute Looks like a P-26 Brewster or something. P-26 P shooter. Give an extra wing and some pontoons. But today we'll be focusing on the Phoenix. Or what I like to call the dead Phoenix because, well, the commander has passed on to the Omaha and thus leaving the Phoenix commanderless. Now, the Phoenix, it's a pretty interesting ship. Background information is that this ship was basically the building block before the Omaha came around. The Omaha being obviously the successor, as you can see, it has the dual 6 inch turrets. Two dual 6 inch turrets, and the rest of them kept in little, little side bubble turrets. Which I find really peculiar. I mean, yes, that'll mean 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6 guns firing forward at any time given. And another 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 guns firing backwards anytime you need it and if you're going side on well you got an extra pair of guns so today Phoenix is it a bad ship theoretically not at first it was a bad ship the grind for it was a little bit of a pain but it's quite bearable I mean this was the first body that the Phoenix came with, and unfortunately, it would seem I'm not be able to revert to it. It came with only six guns, so it'll be minusing this gun over here. It will be minusing this gun at the back. You just have one here, one here, and one up here. So six guns and three on the other side as well. And you have virtually no anti-aircraft guns. And then when you upgrade to the next body. You unlock this gun. Uh, is it this? Yeah, it's this two in the front. And your AA goes up slightly a bit. Or did it not? Yeah, it went up a bit slightly. And finally, when you finally reach here, your AA goes all the way up to a measle 7 points. And you get the two extra guns back here. And thus, you got a fully upgraded Phoenix. That Phoenix with 3 guns obviously is quite terrible, but the Phoenix with 4 guns on each side was pretty good. And when you finally get the full barrel, the full entourage of 4 guns firing from each side, it's a... Pr 4 guns? No! 5 guns! 1, 2, what's the third? Yeah, so we go 3, 4, and 5. We're gonna get a full broadside of 5 guns, this ship is amazing. And because since it's a relatively higher tier 4. It usually goes up to tier 6 games where it finds the Fuso, Clevelands, and all sorts of nasty stuff. And when you do damage to those kind of ships, especially with high explosives, set them on fire, doing extra damage, it, remember you're doing damage to a higher tier ship, so you get a little bit more experience. I have 2k games for doing almost absolutely nothing. Then again, it could just be this ship has excellent spotting abilities. Now, the ship, when fully upgraded, will come with 24,000 hit points. That's not a lot, but remember, you're a cruiser, and this is a particularly light cruiser, so... 6-inch armor piercing rounds will definitely go in and hit your citadel. Now, how do I get this off? Thank you. So, for artillery, you get main batteries. 10 times, 152mm. 5th slash 53 Mark 14 guns housed in this cute little turrets or just totally exposed up here. They have a maximum firing range of 13.7 once you unlock the Mark 4 gun firing module. 
And for torpedoes, torpedoes has only a range of 5.5 kilometers, so you probably won't be using them very often. And if you do, you are probably gonna meet certain death. But nevertheless, this comes with triple launchers of 533 millimeter Mark 1 to Mark 11 torpedoes. My bad. And you get a, to a, to a 90. 90,000 horsepower power plant. Now that's really something for a ship. And this ship is fast. Slightly faster than Omaha. As for AA guns, we got a total of four 50 caliber M2 Mongoose anti aircraft variant Mod 1 machine guns. Then we got four 76.2mm slash 50 Mark 10 guns. These guns, obviously, well, two on each side. And finally, my favorite anti aircraft guns of all time. That we get two four quad barrel uh, 28mm slash 75 Mark II Mark II anti aircraft guns. These ones have been given the infamous nickname of the Chicago Pianos. With the other one, of course, as you've seen, located directly in the front. Let's just say it's horrible at shooting down planes because... I've only shot down one or two and that's barely done anything to change the fact that I still get torpedoed from time to time. So, that will be the Omaha, ladies and gentlemen. It's a good ship. Don't be disappointed. And of course, the ship that came before it, the St. Louis. Another treasure with a pirate style 8 guns per side if you have the two movable guns on turrets pointing at the right sides this thing is an absolute beast you can fire one side then flip the camera around fire the other side it's an awesome ship so without further ado I guess I owe you some gameplay footage and yes it's been a while hope you stay through see you in the video Alright, now we're just waiting for the battle to load up. This is definitely, of course, a post-battle commentary. And the map we're on today is Two Brothers Domination. So as you can see, the Phoenix. A really, really beautiful ship. All the guns are turning. A little bubble turrets. Cute little things. And of course, the deadly triple... Oh, come on. For the love of... The triple top launchers hang out of its... Rear belly ass. Now, two two brothers is actually quite a quirky little map. I mean, there is this narrow strait, and usually people are just really too chicken to go down it because, well, it's not that anybody guts it to be frankly honest. I mean, it's just at the start of the match, both sides just send their fastest ship, come around and launch torpedoes, and they just run off and do their own errands. It happens all the time, and it's gonna happen to me as well. As you can see, I'm preparing, turning side on. My torps have just loaded, and we are. Yeah, we just captured the zone, and. Our team has taken the lead. Whoa, that Watake is just going straight ham, which means I can't fire my own tubes. Besides, my tubes have a pathetic 5.5 kilometer range, so I probably won't even make it in the mouth of the channel. But still, I'm going to fire it anyways because, well, I wouldn't say ammunition is free, but it's sort of cheap-ish at the moment. And currently, there's a new kind of like sonar things, I guess. I don't know. You press T and you're supposed to activate them. Can I do that? Yeah, I can make the sound effects and I can spam it. Weird. I just wish the replay system was a bit better than this. And then that's why I can just spam them. Nope, I can't do that. <laughs> Anyways, a little too high hopes. But yeah, we we'll launched the tubes there. That Wakatake is just coming back around. And it would seem that if we went to our tactical map, almost all the enemy team is heading here for us. And just in the nick of time, we are going there to fight them head on, anyways. So just like action cam going on. Looks like we are targeting a Kuma. Oh, two shots hit the rocks there, and we're just gonna sail on as if nothing has happened. It's a really beautiful ship. Oh, 
Oh what? God damn it, I, I better stop. I better stop the Omaha thing. It's the goddamn Phoenix. Apparently just waiting. That should be a St. Louis if I'm not wrong. Yes it was. Firing torpedoes into the channel. And this time I was a little bit callous. As you can see in the background, that friendly Watake just came out. And of course, thankfully, he didn't either slow down or try to turn into them or turn away from them. So then I did give him a friendly message in chat saying, Hey, watch out, there's torpedoes. But of course, we are Southeast Asian. We don't read the chat, not do we? As we collide into a friendly Phoenix over here. Our team has taken the lead. And I've basically slowed myself to a crawl, meaning I'm quite an easy target for anything. That's a little Kumal there, out opposite number from Japan. And he's just launched and landed a successful side broadside on us, setting a midships flag ablaze. And we slowly, slowly, no, we quickly put it out with the repair, the crew repair skill. And then we're just going on. Two hits so far. Not been the most accurate in this game. I'll give you that. What am I looking at? Yeah, probably the destroyer that's just lying around there. I mean, the Phoenix is a good ship to dodge in. It's really maneuverable. Let's see if I can engage the cinematic mode over here. There we go. Yeah, as you can see. Oh, can't see shit now. Well, there's nothing to shoot at the moment. There's two smoke screens, and I'm probably out of range, anyways. We're aiming for the enemy Phoenix as she comes round. Full broadside away, high explosive loaded. And, well, not the most resoundings of hits, but yeah. I had better days where my aim was a little bit better. And now it's just janky. That Phoenix is definitely having a bad day. 2,000 hit points, that's a good hit. Let's check our surroundings. Currently no one in the immediate area is threatening us. We just fired another two blindly. Hello. Well, if you're fighting in channel combat, you are really not expected to stay in a fucking fixated location for too long. Incoming salvo, another good one for probably another 2,000 health. Another salvo, but I janked my ass out of the way and dodged that one successfully. To be frankly honest, this is not the best part of this replay. This replay is, in my opinion, is generally I'm doing a lot worse than I theoretically should. And yeah, so far so good. Enemy has lost a Phoenix and a Kuma. We are still having, still having our full entourage. Got the torpedo warning, but that's spotted by the destroyer, and the destroyer just dodges it like it was like he wasn't even there. Coming down here, to be freaking honest, at this time and stage, ooh, we set someone on fire. At this kind of stage, we're both just located in this area, and only this smart little fella here, called No Life, has decided to, you know. Go on to the other side and start capping. Yeah, this is a dangerous inlet. I just fired the tubes. I didn't even bother aiming that. But then again, this is more or less serves as a deterrent for any enemy ships that wants to come down this way. Because there's the like, oh no! We've destroyed an enemy cruiser! What have we sunk? I got no idea. There seems to be another enemy Phoenix that I've set on fire. Yeah, that, that message was just that Wakate that was just launching his torpedoes. Nothing to be afraid about. Once again, we start venturing out here. Fire shot. That Phoenix has totally just stopped dead in the water, so I switched to armor piercing here because I was getting cocky because as I said before, the Phoenix has close to no armor. Or I haven't. Are we piercing? I set him on fire with armor piercing? Must be the HE rounds before I load armor piercing then. Spray out torpedoes and just went harmless in front of us. Thankfully we didn't hit any of those. Or it could have been a very, very bad day. Eh, a solid armor piercing here. 1845 damage. 
slowly winning on the points over here. But as you can see, that lone enemy cruiser from the enemy team has begun his assault on our D flag and is now taking control. And I just been hit by a salvo for what may seem to be a battleship. I really want that Phoenix dead, but no way in hell that was ever going to happen. <laughs> As he slowly cruised behind that island, I can tell he just fired a salvo. And then I'm just heading back here the over enemy again. Has taken the lead. Now that could be good news. Well, so having that in mind, we've only lost a destroyer so far, and the enemy has lost a Congo, a Phoenix, two Phoenixes, a Kuma, and an Isokaze. I got no idea why they call it the Isokaze. It's like, is it like the Japanese way of saying, I'm so crazy, like Asokaze, Kaze, Isokaze. Firing at uh, Mayoki here. Mayoki's a really interesting ship, but from what I've heard, it's a horrible ship altogether. Well, we just pumped in a few armor piercing rooms. Armor piercing? Am I literally joking here? Yes. I forget unless I've been doing so much twists and turns that I'm not. Oh, yes, the Phoenix! Come on! You got to kill the Phoenix! No! What are you doing? That was armor piercing, you twat! Fire! High explosive! It's just bouncing off! Hey! The kill! It could have been yours! Ah, uh, he's gone anyways, and now uh, I'm just fine after the Lord Oh, inside. why? God, what is that? An uh, enemy Minikaze has appeared out of nowhere. And Torps! Torps! Dodge, mate! Dodge! Ouch! We need the torpedo here. And we All just right. managed to dodge in time. And, oh dear god. Now that oh, is a nasty there. surprise. More tops coming in, but of course we would have clearly dodged that. But that is in case I turned away. Like that was ever going to happen in the first place. Now he's going to take advantage and hide behind the island. I, on the other hand, would have to get around the island to get to the destroyer. But the thing is, most destroyers like to just shotgun most of their torpedoes before even acquisiting the target. And this is what I was very afraid of as I approach this channel here. I know he's coming for me, and I'm going for him as well. But who will come out this duo alive? There he is! Oh, he's not side on! He's going side on now! He's where I contemplate! I was like, oh, should I turn? Should I launch tubes at him? No, I do not have time! Fire the guns! Fire the bloody guns! Yes, I slowed down the replay. 3,000 damage! Oh my god! Oh, and here comes the torpedo spam. This is not good! Two waves, three waves, three spreads of two! How am I ever gonna dodge that? Oh my word, this is close. As you can see, I'm not even bothered firing at him. I'm just too busy dodging in. Threaded the needle right there. And he's just basically giving up. His guns are directly pointed at me, and he is doing absolutely nothing about it. And good night. Uh, it was a good fight, <laughs> I have to admit. Woo! That could have gone in the opposite way. So. I. Yeah, I had to taunt him for that. It's really. It really has to be really frustrating to see that happen. A narrow spread. Three waves or two. My god. That was an epic dodge. And we've basically won this match with only a single loss of a destroyer. That is humiliating. Uh, the the lead. And most indefinitely we have. As we fire off the last salvo at this Wyoming over here. And just farm off a little few more extra hits. Before the game finally concludes itself to an end. And that's about it. We've won the game. And so, there ends the game, and fortunately I did not save, oh sorry, my bad, 
I did not save the result screen for that match, but if I'm not wrong, I earned about 200,000 credits and about slightly over 1,000 EXP. And other than that, as you can see, we sell for these Asians lemmings! Because I'm too much of a coward to go alone. Because even if I do know I go alone, I meet the enemy lemming team. It's just as good as I don't not I'm not playing the game. So yeah. World of Warships. It's been pretty fun. It has its agonizing moments. One pro tip for you people who are like somewhat like me that absolutely sucks at dodging torpedoes. My tip for you is always turn into them. Whatever you do, just turn into them. Turn into the torpedoes. Nothing else. Alright? You turn into the torpedoes, it's easier for you to steer. I know you're giving yourself less time, but it's easier to dodge it that way. Opposed to you turning away from them, because unless you're in a ship that can outrun, let's say, speeds of. Um. Speeds of 56 knots. Because American torpedoes are absolutely the worst. 56 knots. Then, yeah. Please, just turn into them. Turning away from them just makes it harder to dodge because it's harder to estimate the, how much your ass is going to sway left and right and whatever. So, turn into the torpedoes and never, never sail in a straight line. That's why I turned immediately when I saw that. Minikaze was just going side on and he's just gonna spam all of his torps like nothing in the world gave a damn. So, my name is Mipano160. Hope you enjoyed this very first episode of World of Warships and see you next time. Have a good one.